the highly venomous puff adder, is found in savannas and grasslands from Morocco and Western Arabia throughout Africa and is typically dreaded across the continent. One man, however, has embraced the puff adder. Xavier Claudus, a postdoctoral researcher from Witt University, is a Frenchman studying in South Africa. So I guess for those of you that are really scared of puff adders, uh, well, be the lesson that they're actually not here to attack us. Here he is. Xavier spends his days searching for a snake that most of us would rather avoid. Puff adders are uh, with uh, two other snake species in Southern Africa, um, uh, the Mozambique spitting cobra and the stiletto snakes. They're responsible for 90% of the snake bites in Southern Africa, with almost uh, no fatalities recorded. You may actually lose a part, a finger, uh, you know, something like this. Seems like it's not gonna be an easy one. Xavier's life revolves around snakes. He has researched topics as diverse as sex and space use in the outskirts of Sin City, a rattlesnake's perspective. So what exactly is he studying in these puff adders? The objective of the research is to, uh, is to try to find out uh, how food intake in males actually uh, affect their mate uh, searching activities and, and reproductive success. So what we're doing is we're actually manipulating access to food to the males uh, and we're trying to uh, see how it affects uh, the distance they travel in search of female and that uh, how, how does it actually in turn uh, affect their reproductive success. And uh, ultimately uh, we will be able to tell and uh, certain uh, how food actually uh, translate into making babies. Xavier has a series of cameras in place around the lodge from which he works and every evening he activates the cameras that will record the puff adder's nighttime activities. Snakes can be difficult to monitor due to the environment in which they live and because their camouflage is so good. So how exactly do you keep track of a snake in the African bush? Uh, we rely on radio telemetry. Uh, the radio telemetry is the basic, if you will, of the project. It allows us to actually find the animal. That's a transmitter here, uh, recovered from a dead snake that got eaten. We put that inside of the snake, so it's a surgery. Xavier's research is taking place in Dinukeng, Gauteng's first free-roaming Big Five residential game reserve. Before Xavier can track these snakes, he needs to use his telemetry to make sure there are no large predators around. Let's check for lions first. Uh, it's a Big Five area, so you got to be careful, obviously. The good thing is that the lions have a radio collar, so we can actually check, and I know the frequencies of the radio collars. And in this case, I think we're... We're pretty safe. Without the imminent threat of encountering wild lions, Xavier sets off to feed his venomous friends. All the males I have, all adults, I separate them into two groups. There's going to be a group uh, that will be receiving food from me, and there's another group that will be uh, feeding by themselves. That's what we call a control, if you will. It gives you a base of reference. So what I do is actually I offer them uh, um, some mice. It's a striped mouse. Uh, it's a, of the genus Rhabdomus. They're diurnal mouse, so, and they actually Often, uh, they actually naturally feed on those. All right, so what I do is actually, I, I kind of hand feed them, uh, individuals, you know. I provide them some mouse. Uh, they can take it right away. Sometimes they actually strike at the mouse, uh, but this one is, uh, uh, he's kind of a shy guy, so he doesn't like to hit in front of people. Well, you could see the reaction he had, you know. We, we're, we're there, we come to him, and the first thing he's done is actually, he stood still at first, which is what they do, puff adders. They're just hoping not to be detected. Uh, then he realized that we actually saw it because we're, you know, messing around. And then he took off. That's the typical uh, puff adder reaction to me. They're placid, really. There is actually a point to studying how food impacts a puff adder's ability to find a mate. It's intellectual curiosity. Uh, it actually germinated in my mind while I was doing my PhD uh, in, in the US on rattlesnakes. And, uh, I've just been rethinking the project I did for my PhD and was just wondering, wow, that would be wonderful to be able to do a project like this. And so I came here and I decided to do a second PhD, very much. We joined Xavier at the beginning of the puff adder mating season. 
So the longest distance that a male has traveled during a mating season, which is approximately three month period, uh, is 16.6 kilometers. This is a minimal estimate because we use straight line distance to calculate uh, the distance traveled between each consecutive location. So it's an underestimate. It kind of breaks the myth of the, of the uh, lazy viper, really. While tracking one of these males, we discovered him trying to seduce a female. Melpa feathers uh, that meets a female, it will start to court her. Uh, it's a very stereotypical behavior in which he pretty much gets on her back, if you will, and he just like tongue flicking and doing some kind of a head jerking movement. And he's actually waiting for the female to pretty much let him in. She opens her cloaca if she's actually seduced, and then uh, the male can enter her. Obviously, I need to remove that female for a few days until we can put it, a transmitter inside of her. Uh, but so I'm disrupt disrupting. Uh, to some extent, but uh, you know, in a couple of days, uh, the, uh, the female will be back here, and it's very likely that that male will actually be waiting for her. You know, a lot of people actually relocate snake. You know, uh, uh, obviously, some people don't like to have snakes around them, so uh, they relocate the snake. So you know, they catch it and put it and release it somewhere else, a kilometer away. Uh, the odds are that snake will come back. Uh, later, uh, they have incredible spatial abilities. Uh, we actually do not really understand what cues they use to, to navigate, really. You could move it in any kind of direction, a kilometer away, that snake would eventually come back here. Anyone who spends a lot of time in the bush has some fear of stepping on a puff adder and suffering the painful consequences. Tini Graf, the owner of the lodge where Xavier is staying during his research, has had her own experience of this, but without the painful consequences. The staff was telling me, ma'am, you're actually standing on a puff adder. And he was not doing anything. It's not a nice feeling knowing that you stood on a puff adder, but uh, it just proves to you, you they're not always going to attack you. Xavier himself has accidentally stood on the puff adders he is studying. I've personally stepped on four of my snakes during my study. Sometimes you're, you're actually you're looking for the snakes with the antenna and, and, and you just realize you're on top of the snake. The transmitters and the puff adders do not necessarily make it easy to locate them. Um, it's exactly what, what happened right now. I was, I was almost stepping on it. I was, really, uh, I was a few centimeters from that snake and he didn't do anything. This footage from one of his cameras backs up his and Tini's experiences. It shows a porcupine clambering over a puff adder lying in wait to catch a meal. The porcupine stomps unceremoniously all over the puff adder before rambling off into the night. Snakes often are described as aggressive, but this is actually not the right term. Aggression refers to an unprovoked attack. They will defend themselves if they feel threatened. You know, they have personalities, all those different snakes. Some are actually more feistier than others. Some snakes would not allow myself to just get too close from them because I know that they, they don't like it and they would actually, they would strike at me. But this is the exception rather than the rule. Most of them are, are very well behaved and they just uh, watch you from the corner of their eyes. And as long as you keep, you know, keep that, that distance between you and them, uh, they're, they're fine, they're perfectly fine. Early in the morning, Xavier collects the cards from his cameras and painstakingly trolls through hours of footage searching for new behavior for his research. It's really a boring job because you're actually reviewing and fast, you know, you're kind of fast forwarding uh, the whole activity of the night. And the life of a viper is really not that exciting, uh, so it's boring. You're pretty much looking at a viper just standing there on the ground and, and, and not doing anything. And uh, yeah, when they catch something, you actually get, it's a moment, you know, it's an adrenaline shot that you're getting, you're quite excited. The remote cameras have actually, uh, are a formidable tool because they really allow me uh, to look into what they're doing, you know, on, on a, pretty much all night long. The cameras capture some amazing footage. Well, what you can see here is a rat that's coming to investigate a, a potential uh, nesting site, I believe. It didn't pick up on the puff adder yet, but uh, when it actually saw that there was a massive puff adder and he, he took off, he, he freaked out, really. That rat is within striking range, totally. I'm not sure why the snake didn't strike at, at the rat. Uh, maybe it was snoozing. On this footage here, we've got a puff adder that's just catching a rat. The teeth of the snakes are actually entangled into the fur of the rodent. That's why he's struggling, but he meant to, to strike and release it. Uh, now, what's going to happen? happen is uh, uh, when the snake bites, uh, it will inject the venom. And in this venom, there are actually proteins uh, that will actually change the prey scent. It allows the snake to discriminate the path of the rodent it just bit from the path of all the other rodents that are running around in the backyard, if you will. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the mechanism that they use to be able to track the specific prey they just bit. It is generally ignorance that causes man's inherent fear of the unknown. The more we learn, the clearer the wonders of nature can become.
While the puff adder is a dangerous venomous snake, it is by no means an aggressive creature. It is truly amazing that Africa's incredible biodiversity is attracting passionate scholars from far and wide. Hopefully Xavier Dlauder's research will open many minds and change many perceptions about the puff adder.